It's nothing short of a watershed moment for the political and criminal system in the United States. For the first time in history, a former U.S. president is facing criminal charges. Donald J. Trump turned himself into a court in Manhattan and pleaded not guilty to 34 felony charges. Trump did not speak to the media inside or outside the courthouse. He showed little emotion when he waved to crowds as he arrived to turn himself in. He'd been driven in a motorcade from his New York residence at Trump Tower. He's accused of falsifying business records in relation to hush money payments allegedly made to several people in the run-up to the 2016 elections. After the arraignment, the judge released Trump from custody without pre-trial restrictions. And the charges against Trump come from an investigation led by Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg. Here is Bragg speaking to the press just minutes after Trump left the court. Under New York state law, it is a felony to falsify business records with intent to defraud and an intent to conceal another crime. That is exactly what this case is about. 34 false statements made to cover up other crimes. These are felony crimes in New York state, no matter who you are. We cannot and will not normalize serious criminal conduct. NDW's Washington Bureau Chief Enos Pohl is outside the court building in Manhattan where Trump was arraigned. Enos, Trump has pleaded not guilty on all 34 counts. What can you tell us about the charges? Yeah, that was quite a day here, Nicole. We started really early and it was really intense. Helicopters are still cruising over the courthouse. So to simplify what happened, the prosecutors are saying that Donald Trump uh, broke election law by falsifying business records to cover up bad information about him, information which might have hurt his chances to become elected uh, as the president of the United States. Many people here and probably around the United States and maybe even around the world were hoping for uh, some bombshells today to be disclosed. They might be disappointed because we didn't really uh, learn uh, really very new uh, things, but it still might be far uh, too early really to say uh, what we uh, uh, will be uh, kind of learning over the course of the next days because this is just like the very first moment after we heard about the charges. Now, this historic court appearance has drawn huge crowds. There was concern about possible altercations. Who was there today and what did they have to say about this whole affair? Right, there were hundreds of uh, people in front of the courthouse uh, before uh, Donald Trump uh, arrived and they also were there when he was inside and they came, many of them came really from outside uh, New York and as always in these cases you see those who are in support of Donald Trump and those who are very critical with him. I had the chance to talk with some of them. Let's have a listen what they told me. It, it's going to help him, absolutely. I mean... Listen, he was indicted, he was um, impeached twice. He was under investigation since he came down the elevator in 2016. And they couldn't find anything. So this is just a destruction from what's really going on in this country with the Biden regime. I think this is a very serious moment right now and it's wonderful that he's being held accountable for the crimes that he's committed. This is the first, I'm sure, of many indictments that's going to come his way. Uh, well, I, I want to make sure that President Trump uh, doesn't get you know, run over by this Attorney General Bragg and, and it's a politically motivated witch hunt against him. I don't think it's going to hurt him. I think we the people stand for Trump and that's why we're here today. I think the DA did his job. He followed the facts, and the facts led to an indictment. Uh, this wasn't a case where uh, he was influenced. Uh, with, uh, like Donald Trump took out a full-page ad against five black kids and said they should be executed. This wasn't a case where they had police officers lying on the record. He simply followed the, the facts, and that led to indictment. And now we have to let the process play itself out. It already helped it. It helped him yesterday. So it helped him the day before, so obviously it's going to help him today. He got a 10% boost in the polls. Ron DeSantis got a 10% negative in the polls yesterday. 
So you see, uh, we just uh, heard that this is also one of these very divisive issues here in the United uh, States. And Nicole, um, as little as we know uh, what the outcome will be, we already know that this will be really a money machine for Donald Trump because he's always able to turn attention into dollars. Like only 24 hours after the indictment was announced on Friday, his campaign at least says he was able to fundraise four million dollars so this is anyhow what he's going to make uh, out of this uh, uh, appearance here today uh, at the courthouse behind me yeah no such thing as bad publicity that's one of his big mottos enos pool joining us from new york city great speaking to you Now for more on the first criminal charges to ever be brought against a former or sitting president of the United States, let's bring in Mark Fisher. He's a senior editor at the Washington Post. Mr. Fisher, welcome to the day. Now over the years, Trump has been involved in many investigations. How come until now, none of them had led to an indictment? Well, he's been a master of manipulating the court system. Uh, he's a master of delay. He's already seeking to delay this trial. Uh, he's a master of marketing himself. He's already selling T-shirts uh, on his campaign website uh, that show him with a fake mug shot. For $47, you can get one of those T-shirts, and it says not guilty across the front of it. Uh, so he's someone who's able to use the legal system to his own benefit. Uh, and he's been able to skate by by abusing the legal system uh, through delay, through tactics uh, of, of uh, uh, attacking those who are coming after him. Attack, he's already attacked the judge, he's attacked the prosecutor. So this is uh, these are pages from a long-standing playbook that Donald Trump has used for five decades to escape from legal troubles. Can he do it again? Unclear, uh, but certainly this is going to be a dominant factor in the coming campaign. Yeah, he has been charged with 34 counts of falsifying business records in the first degree. How serious is this? These are serious felonies. Uh, they're the lowest class of felonies. He, no one is likely to go to prison for uh, these kinds of acts. Uh, but he could well be punished and he could well uh, face uh, some serious consequences, including uh, an effort to uh, perhaps uh, stop him from running for a third time for president. Uh, but in all likelihood, this is going to stretch out over the course of the campaign. Uh, the prosecution wants this trial to start in January of next year. The defense lawyer said, no, let's wait till next spring, well into the presidential campaign. The judge hasn't decided quite yet when the trial will start, uh, but it's going to be a probably a year-long process. Yeah, the judge wants to get this un underway as soon as possible as well. But let's not forget that Trump is also being investigated in at least four other cases, isn't he? And some analysts argue that it's not ideal that this one was the first case for him to be indicted for. Why is that? Well, this is uh, a case that at its base uh, has at, at its center uh, the payment of hush money to a woman who, uh, in, in, actually in this case, two women, uh, who say that uh, he either had sexual relations with them or sought to. Uh, and so in this case, uh, it, it, it's the kind of behavior that some people, some Americans might believe, is private behavior and should not be prosecuted. Whereas the other investigations that are underway that may lead to indictments in the coming weeks are of much more serious matters of policy and governance, matters of uh, whether Trump sought to overturn the results of the 2020 election. Uh, whether he secreted away classified documents after his presidency was over. So these are the kinds of issues that I think would have a much wider public uh, supporting a prosecution in those kinds of cases. Mm. The Trump case, you mentioned it before, is busy trying to spin this in his favor and getting lots of backing from their supporters, actually. But I want to ask you, as someone who's been watching Trump very closely over the years, you wrote a biography of his. This is a day he has long hoped would never come, isn't it? How do you think he personally feels about all this? Well, hes uh, you could tell by looking at him in the courtroom uh, the pictures that have emerged uh, are of someone who is angry, uh, who is really miffed at uh, having to go through this process. Uh, he, this is a day that he's avoided for many years, uh, so he's, uh, he's, he's clearly shaken by this. On the other hand, uh, the way he always reacts to these things is to be emboldened, to take that anger and turn it to his advantage, to use it as an aggressive 
aspect of his campaign and his business. So he wants to make money off this. He's going to seek to do that. His track record is that he will. The fact that only a handful of Republicans have spoken out against this candidacy in light of his indictment, what does that tell us about his remaining power over the Republican Party? Because political instinct would be to immediately instrumentalize this, wasn't it? Well, we'll see. Uh, so far, Republicans are, for the most part, sticking by him as they watch the polls, as they watch how uh, the Trump base reacts to this uh, indictment. Uh, but there have been a real movement away from Trump, both among Republican and independent voters and among uh, some office holders as well uh, over the last several months. And whether that will continue or not, uh, we'll have to see. It's, uh, tr there's a tremendous consensus in this country among Democrats, Republicans, and independents alike uh, that people do not want to see either Donald Trump or Joe Biden running for office again. They want to move on to a new generation of leadership. There are large majorities in the polls who say that. So whether they'll stick with that or feel uh, sympathetic to Trump, uh, feel that he's being railroaded or uh, prosecuted for political reasons, uh, that's going to develop over the coming months. And uh, it's, it's anybody's guess where it lands. Mm -hmm. That is very true. Mark Fisher of The Washington Post, thank you so much for those insights. Great to be with you.